Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 13th of January 2020 and the time has just gone 11.30 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive but subdued start to the trading, se- trading session here in Europe today. Uh, essentially, traders are very much looking ahead to Wednesday when the US and China will sign phase one of the trade deal which was brokered at the back end of last year. Uh, so it's likely that we could see a bit of the optimism continue between now and then. And um, the, the, the picture is probably going to remain positive, seeing as the it's kind of a, it's a finalizing of that agreement. But the US-China trade story is far from over. Uh, at some point, the two sides are going to have to start discussing phase two of the trade deal. And this is going to include topics which are much more complicated, such as Beijing government funding uh, private businesses in China, and on top of that, uh, a very important issue for the United States government is the issue of intellectual property rights. Uh, this is areas that are going to be much more complicated, much more drawn out. And given that China can play the long game, uh, I don't predict this, I don't foresee uh, Beijing being overly, um, overly soft on President Trump and actually conceding loads. So I think a lot of 2020, a good chunk of it, in kind of from the first quarter towards the kind of middle of the year, or towards the third quarter, we're going to see a lot of U.S.-China um, trade kind of jostling because President Trump uh, will be seeking re-election in November, and he'll want to be seen to kind of be fighting the you know the economic fight for America, putting America first. At the same time, you know we probably see a sim- similar to what we saw this year, whereby ebbing of flows and more. You know, a better deal was given for the U.S., but at the same time, every time kind of hurdles and progress was made, and then it looks like things are improving. Coincidentally, U.S. stock markets are hitting all-time highs, also benefiting President Trump from a political point of view. So, I think in the near term, we're going to see a continuation of the positive sentiment uh, between the U.S. and China. But at some point, we're going to have to talk about phase two, and that's where things could turn a bit sour. Now. Um, it is worth remembering we had a fairly lackluster or middle of the road jobs report from the US on Friday just gone. Um, in December, 145,000 jobs were created. Analysts were ex- expecting 166,000 to be, to be created, so it came below expect, largely below expectations. It wasn't a particularly hot number. Um, the previous month's number, the, the very strong November number of 266,000, that was revised down slightly to. to 256,000. So still a good number. We average out the two reports over the, over the two months. Uh, unemployment in the, in the US remains at a joint 50-year low, 3.5%. But the wage growth figure cooled from 3.1% to 2.9%. So it wasn't particularly impressive job report number. That being said, the Dow Jones so down to hit, a uh, briefly hit a record high on Friday. Uh, but overall, things are looking red, re, you know, okay in terms of the actual from, from a from a sentiment, from an economic indicator's point of view, uh, as far as the US goes, this morning we had some not so hot economic indicators out of the uh, out of the UK. There was an, it was estimated that uh, on a monthly on a month on month basis, uh, the US the UK economy uh, uh, contracted uh, in November, but that is taken in the context of the three month f- estimate. Um, for the three months running up to just, uh, for November, which estimated that um, growth increased marginally by 0.1%. Industrial, no, manufacturing, manufacturing production and industrial production both showed uh, losses in the month of November, which is hardly a surprise, seeing as obviously the UK was supposed to leave um, the European Union in late October. That was that was extended, and then of course an, a general election was called, which was set for. Which have said for you know mid December, so uncertainty. Um, it's hardly a surprise, but what this has done, this has ramped up the talk that the bank, that the Bank of England are going to look to cut interest rates. Now we've already heard in advance of these not so hot numbers of the UK today. We already had chatter or commentary from a number of policymakers at the Bank of England talking about veering towards an interest rate cut, or in some cases voting for one. Now some of that chatter and speculation has increased, so we're seeing downward pressure on the British pound on the back of that. So what I'll do now is I'll take a quick look at some of the big uh, economic announcements, the corporate stories of the week ahead. Uh, the, the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, 
under insights you'll see news analysis this is where you'll find uh, our, uh, our update so obviously the US and Iranian tensions are still ongoing from a political point of view but as far as the financial markets are concerned as long as both sides don't appear to be uh, on the verge of war which they're which are, which are clearly not uh, that is that, that story has um, from a financial markets point of view uh, quickly become old news as I mentioned a few minutes ago we have a disappointing industrial production and, and industrial and, man, and um, manufacturing production numbers from the UK this morning looking ahead to tomorrow Boohoo the fashionable online fashion house uh, they have their third quarter figures out uh, looking to the middle of the week uh, we will enter banking US reporting season uh, and really kicking things off with some of the major banks the likes of JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, one area for about one kind of common theme we've noticed in uh, in the U.S. banking se sector in particular has been that a move away from tra trading the financial markets. You know, um, a very uh, previously a very key metric used to be FIC, fixed incomes, currencies and commodities, and the and the revenue that is derived from those trading activities. Nowadays, more banks are looking to seek um, take on less risk. And actually earn their money, earn their crust from wealth management fees and investment banking fees and mergers and acquisition advisory fees. So, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. On Thursday, uh, sorry, apologies, on Tuesday, we have four quarter figures out from Delta Airlines. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, the US will have the China trade balance, and then, and then on Wednesday, we should have the signing of the US China trade deal. Wednesday, we're also going to have the U.S. page book, so an update of what's going on with the U.S. economy. On Wednesday, we also have fourth quarter figures from Persimmon, the U.K. home builder. On when, on apologies, on Thursday, third quarter numbers from Whitbread, uh, and then on Friday, we have um, some economic indicators out of China, retail sales, and industrial production. So what I'll do now is I'll take a look at what's going on at some of the big markets covering. The big indices, a couple of currency pairs, and some of the big commodities. So the broad theme since for about a month now, or even over a month, on the FTSE 100, as that's been pushing to the upside, it hit a multi-month high, uh, about a about a five-six month high in late in late December. So things are looking quite positive. The market has managed to recoup most of the ground that was lost in this period here, on the back of the U.S. Iranian tensions. So things are looking are looking to be still quite positive, and the wider upward trends remains intact. If we can push on higher from here and take out the December high, we can then be looking at targeting this zone here, the highest seen in July. And that comes into play in around 7,731. It's only really if you have a sizable sell-off or you take, take out the recent lows, the lows in, on the back of the Iranian tensions, and that came into play in around 7,740. It's only really if you take out those lows, could then we begin to think, okay, maybe the recent bullish trend isn't as strong as we thought and even if that is the case we could find ourselves back on uh, this zone here in around 7400 there thereabouts which coincides with the 50-day moving average the chair market is in a far better position not too long ago uh, we're basically at a two-year high there thereabouts uh, on the chair market and even though we're slightly off of the very recent highs so it's very much in an upward trend and if you look to press on higher from here, we're currently trading in around 13,460, there thereabouts. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be get targeted this zone here, uh, 13,600, a level last seen in late Jan January 2018. Uh, and if you do happen to push a bit lower on the uh, on the DAX, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold, seeing as the market's been in an upward trend for the last few months. Buying on the dip has been a very popular strategy. So if we do manage to push a bit lower from here, we could find some support coming to, coming to play at this area here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play in around 13,210. So the metric has been important in the past in terms of it has acted as support on a few occasions. It makes it more likely it will be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. Um, if it's only really if we take out the, the, the lows of that mid-December here, this line, this line here, and that comes into play. Um, it just south of 12,900. If we, it's only really if you take off, if you take off that, because then we begin to think, okay, maybe we got further ground to lose, and that could send us back down towards 12,800, or perhaps even down, down as low as 12,660. 
the US markets are in far better shape than their European counterparts. Like I said, uh, on Friday, even though the non farm payrolls figures weren't particularly impressive, they were okay. If anything, a bit on the weak side. Um, you know, we still racked up a new all-time high in the Dow Jones, so the trend is clearly to the upside. Um, we're expecting the Dow Jones to open around, to open north of twelve of 28,900. So we'd all be looking for, head, head towards the big psychological number of 29,000, a level which you did exceed uh, on Friday. And then, of course, if you go beyond that, we'd be, you know, we'd be looking to set, uh, set uh, further fresh records. Uh, if we do see a bit of a pullback on the Dow Jones, support could come into play from this zone here, down around 28,500 down to 28,400. So that region there did has seen a fair bit of consolidation in recent weeks. And even if you drop below that, we could find some support coming into play from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play at 28,120. It is a fairly similar picture on the S&P 500, not too far away from record high. So the so the so the, so the market sentiment is clearly uh, still quite bullish. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,280, 90, and then beyond that, the next big kind of psychological number would be 3,300. And even if you see a bit of a pullback in the market, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be anything to get overly shocked about. Uh, keep in mind. Um, if we do look to kind of push on lower from here, we could see support from this zone here in around 3,205, 206, um, and even this zone here in around 3,200 itself. A bit of consolidation in the region in mid-December. That's only really if we take out the early, you know, the early January lows of 3,181 there thereabouts. Could then we begin to think, okay, we could be in for a bit more, it could be in for for the losses from here. And should that be the case, it could take us back down towards this line here in around 3066. I'll take a look at a couple of currency pairs now, as promised, starting off with the pound versus the US dollar. So it's been a very interesting run for the pound in the last few months. We've had a decent move from the upside between early September through mid December. This obviously was on the back of the uh, election result. The market gave up some of the ground. It bounced back and now we appear to be pushing lower again. We're pretty much on the 50 moving average, which comes to the play, um, well, actually below it. We're currently just south of 130, one spot 30, big, big psychological level. But on top of that, it also coincides with a 50 moving average. And if we can if we can get back above 130, we could stand a chance at kind of um, continuing the more, the more recent upward trend. I could take us to 132. And that could have put us on track towards the, um, the highs achieved in late December. But if you drift lower from here and we take off the, the, the lows of um, just before of Christmas week in at what, just north of one spot 29, in at one spot 29.04, we could then be looking heading back towards this red line here, the trendy moving average, and that comes to play at one spot 26.90. And a move below that could take us back down towards one spot 26. Look at what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. It's been not particularly, you know, the euro has, has been broadly pushing higher against the green back the last few months. We can see here pushed a higher high in late October and we kind of gave it back some of that ground. The highs of late December took out the highs of October, but and we are, and we have, we, and, the, and the lows that we have produced recently have been higher than, than the previous lows. So I think it's still in the kind of upper trend, higher highs and higher low stage, but it's not exactly tearing things up. And we can see here that it's currently in around the 1 spot 1181 area. On one hand, we're still just below the 50 moving average, but on the other side, we're holding above the 50 moving average. So if we continue to hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play in at 1 spot 1090, if we can continue to hold above that, we could look at heading back up towards the, this red line here, the trend moving average, which comes into play uh, in at one spot 1140. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting one, one spot 12, and then beyond that, up towards one spot 1249. But you can see to me, that it's, not, it's, not a, it's an upward trend, but it's not a particularly strong upward trend. It's only really if you have a decent break below, say, this, this um, the 100 moving average in at one spot 1064. Could then we begin to think, okay, maybe the 
the, 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 the weakish upper trend has come to an end. And should that be the case, it could take us back down towards one spot 10, this zone down around here. And if you take out the lows of late November, it could pull us back down towards the kind of 109 district. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the oil market. Obviously, oil was very, very topical in recent weeks. So after hitting, um, after racking up very impressive gains in early January on the account of the fears surrounding Iran, we've now managed to give up basically most of those gains. We're, we've been moving aggressively lower the last few sessions. On here on Brent crude, we're still holding above the 50 moving average and the 20 moving average, but it seems to me that we're, um, a lot of the fears surrounding a potential conflict between the U.S. and Iran has tapered off. And I think it could be in a similar scenario to what we saw after the drone strikes in Saudi Arabia, whereby the markets initially had jumped and skyrocketed, but then quite a bit of ground was given up. So we could look at heading back down towards um, the eternity moving average and the 50 moving average. Notice how the two um, moving averages are basically intersecting with each other, so making that metric all the more important potentially. So if we do drift lower from here, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold down around this zone in around 64 spot 57. If we can hold above that metric, we could see the kind of more, the wider uh, trend over the last few months continue, and that could look as look to take us back up towards the kind of 69 region. If we do, on the other hand, have a fairly sizable break below this area, that will be fairly significant, seeing as it's like we got a couple of important moving averages crossing at the same point. That could take us back down towards this line here. The 100 moving average, which comes into play at 62 to 83. And if you do manage to break below that, it could take us back down toward the kind of psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel. And that is on Brent. So I'll take a look at what's going on on WTI. Very similar position on WTI. Notice how the um, notice how the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, has acted as fairly decent support in the last couple of sessions. So if you could hold above that metric, we can likely to actually kind of head back up towards 60 bucks a barrel, and then if you go beyond that, up towards the kind of 62 region. But it's also worth pointing out how the 50 day moving average is comfortably above the 30 moving average on Brent. So the market does appear to be stronger, sorry, on WTI than Brent. But like I said, if you do manage to drop back below 50 day moving average and if we, we take out this red line here, the, the eternity moving average in a 57 spot 75. We could find support come from this line here. If you draw a line between the lows achieved in early October and mid October, you get this trend line here. So while we hold about, you know, this this region could act as a support, should be able to move to the downside. And then if you have a if you have a decent break below that, could could take us back down toward this zone here, down around 54. Lastly, I should take a look at the gold market and then we look to wrap things up. So gold, I went out to hit a fresh, uh, a fresh multi-year high, a fresh six-year high in January. On the back of the Iranian fears, markets have cooled off, gave back some of the ground. But as we can see that while we hold, we've been uh, kind of building a bit of a base down around here. We're well above the 100 moving average and also the 50 moving average um, on the on the on the on the gold market we seem to be struggling to get a press on ahead um from this zone here in around kind of 1555 in around the kind of 1555 region but while we hold above the low the lows here that were achieved last thursday in around 1540 we could see the market to kind of slowly but surely kind of rebuild some of the ground or recoup some of the ground that I lost recently should that be the case it could take us back up towards 1580 or up, up towards 1590 or possibly even indeed the psychological important 1600 mark uh, on the flip side if, if market does manage to turn over itself and we take out the lows um, of last week in around 1540 we could take us back down towards 1530 and then it possibly even as low down as a psychologically important 1500 well thank you for listening that's all for me this week and please tune in next week thank you very much